Hello, everyone. I'm Lu Mingrui. Today, we are going to talk about Chinese painting. It is a traditional form of Chinese painting in which a brush is dipped in water, ink, and color, and painted on silk or paper. Let's see some Chinese paintings. This one is landscape painting. This one is the orchid. This one is horses. Now let's see some Western paintings. Can you find the differences between Chinese painting and Western painting? Good. In Chinese painting, it uses lines, but in Western painting, it rarely uses lines. In Chinese painting, no focus on context, but in Western painting, it focuses on text. In Chinese painting, no focus on perspective, but in Western painting, it focuses on perspective. In Chinese painting, it doesn't use anatomical theories, but in Western painting, it uses anatomical theories. In Chinese painting, the subject is mainly about nature, but in Western painting, the subject is mainly about human. Now, let's learn more about Chinese painting. Part one, we will talk about fundamentals of Chinese painting. Part two is classification of Chinese painting. Part three is skills of Chinese painting. Part four, we will appreciate Chinese paintings. First, let's say the fundamentals of Chinese painting. It originates from the Han Dynasty. You can find from these pictures, the drawing at that time is very similar to the oracle bones. So we have a word, Shu Hua Tong Yuan, which means calligraphy and painting share a common origin. During the Warren State period, people drew pictures on a piece of silk called a palm painting. During the Han, Wei, Jin, and North-South dynasties, you can see a lot of religious paintings. During Sui and Tang dynasties, landscape and flower paintings matured, and religious paintings reached their peak. During the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties, there are many rulers having their own characteristics. Now, let's take a look at what do we need for Chinese painting. It's the four treasures of study. They are Bi, Mo, Zhi, and Yan. For Bi, we use different kinds of brushes to draw Chinese painting. We can use the big brush to draw leaves, use the small one to draw flowers. For more, traditional inks are divided into pine suit inks, suit inks, as well as mixed inks, which are suitable for beginners. For zhi, we use xuan paper. As for yan, there are many types of ink stones the most common being Shi Yan and Tao Yan. It is used to grind inks and to hold inks or brushes. Now let's watch a video about the four treasures of study. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Today, we're going to talk about the four treasures of the study in China, 
文房四宝。They're all indispensable tools for Chinese calligraphy and Chinese painting. The first one is writing brush, bi. Bi means pen. However, different from the pen that we use for daily writing, the Chinese writing brush is soft and big, and we call it mao bi. It is usually made of animal hair. When the top of the Chinese writing brush is dipped in the ink. It soaks up the ink and is ready to be used. Next one is ink stick, mo. Ink sticks are the ink in the solid state. Getting ink from ink sticks requires some physical labor, so ancient Chinese calligraphers had attendants help them with this part. Rub against the ink stick to ink slab and form the ink, which brings us to the third one. Ink slab, yan. Yan is the container used in Chinese calligraphy and painting for grinding ink stick and mixing it with water. Most of ink slabs are made of stone. The last one is paper, zhi. The paper here refers to xuan zhi, which is rice paper. Compared to the regular paper we use every day, xuan zhi is renowned for being thin, soft, and fine textured. It can absorb liquid like ink easily. Altogether, they are bi, mo, zhi, yan. They represent ancient Chinese scholars, Chinese calligraphy, and painting. Even today, Chinese calligraphy are still used in our daily life. The most common example is the cutlets for every Chinese family to put up on their doors. Countless people are practicing calligraphy because it builds concentration and perseverance, and helps to find the inner peace. So today we got to know about the four treasures of study: 文房四宝 and they are 笔墨纸砚 Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you next time. Bye. Now let's see part two. It's the classification of Chinese painting. According to the content, Chinese painting can be divided into figure painting, flower and bird painting, and landscape painting. This one is figure painting, which is from the Warren State period. Figure painting can be divided into Portrait, story painting. This painting depicts the seven sages of the bamboo forest. And rounder painting. This one is a flower and bird painting. This flower is peony, the national flower of China. This painting is a bamboo by Zheng Banqiao. Which represents a notable quality in China. This one is a horse by Xu Bei Hong, which is very famous. This painting is of shrimp by Qi Bai Shi. He was the master of shrimp painting. Now let's see some landscape paintings. Landscape painting can be divided into green and blue landscape painting, light purple landscape painting, gold and green landscape painting, and water and ink landscape painting. According to the technique, Chinese painting can be divided into 工笔写意白描、墨骨 and finger painting. This one is 工笔 painting. This one is 写意 painting. Can you find the differences between 工笔 painting and 写意 painting? Yeah, for 工笔 painting, the beauty of the line. And the similarity of the shape are important in it. 
in Xie Yi painting, the emphasis is not on the beauty of the line, but on the resemblance. Bai Miao is a method of drawing an object with lines of ink without color. It is also used to paint with light ink, mostly used for figure painting and flower painting. This one is also about orchid. Orchids represent notability and virtue, so people like to draw orchids to express their emotions. Mo Gu is the opposite of Bai Miao in that it draws objects directly in color without the use of ink lines. Finger painting is a special form of Chinese painting. Fingers, fingernails, and palms are dipped in ink or color and painted on paper. These finger paintings are painted by Gao Qi Pei. Part 3 is the skills of Chinese painting. Chinese painting strokes are roughly divided into three categories, Gou Miao, Cun Cha, and Dian Ran, which are in fact ever-changing. For this painting, it uses Cha to draw his hair, uses Dian to draw his lips, uses Ran to draw his skin, uses Go and Cun to draw his clothes. As for ink, it can be divided into dry and wet ink. The color of ink, there are Jiao, Nong, Zhong, Dan, Qing, Dan Po Nong is we draw dark ink firstly and then draw light ink. Nong Po Dan is we draw light ink firstly and then draw dark ink. The color of Chinese painting, they have their beautiful names like Peng Huang and Yan Zhi and so on. Part four is the appreciation of Chinese painting. When we appreciate Chinese painting, we need to notice the beauty of the work, the beauty of the work's mood, the beauty of the work's brushwork, and the poetry of the work. Now, let's see how to draw the Chinese painting. First, we need to observe the real flower. Now, let's draw the flower. First, we will use Zhu Biao and Yan Zhi to draw this flower.
Now we draw leaves. We use the brush to dip the green, and use the tip of the brush to dip the ink. After the leaves becoming drier, we use ink to draw its stem. Then we will use light green to draw the leaves far away from us. Then we will use light red to draw the flower far away from us.
After finish this work, we will use ink to write the name of this drawing and our name. Is it interesting to draw Chinese painting? I hope you enjoy this class and know more about Chinese painting. See you next time. Bye.